Bonjour y'all, Adrian Lombard here. Welcome or welcome back on my channel. Today I want to talk to you about a major CG concept, the game-changing USD. If you expect me to talk about the American's currency value, you are on the wrong video, sorry. By USD I mean Universal Scene Description. The technology that Pixar created and that is now being implemented in all your favorite apps. I created a simple scene thanks to USD and Houdini Solaris. But before breaking it down and getting into the nitty gritty of Solaris, I thought it would be helpful to bring some clarification about this method and maybe help you find out why you would even need to care about having USD in your 3D software. As I was saying, USD stands for Universal Scene Description. It is completely open source and we have to thank Pixar for that. They created it for the need of their amazing productions and actively worked on it since 2010 on their movie Brave. They extensively tested it as part of their pipeline until the release of the source code in 2016. Because all the departments doesn't necessarily use the same software between layout, animation, lighting, effects, their idea was to open the collaboration between departments by having some sort of format that would help them representing the final scene into any of their application. It's been often reduced as a file format, just like a lambic. It may seem like one, but don't fool yourself, it is much more than that. USD, more than a format, it's a way of life. Thanks to what we call a stage, you basically get a single place where you can describe the entire scene into one file that you can then easily export and consistently reuse in another software. You can see that as the everything everywhere all at once of CG. Across the multiverse, I've seen thousands of Evelyns. I'm here because we need your help. Very busy today, I'm so tired to help you. If you haven't seen this movie, check it out, it's amazing. The fact that so many applications like Houdini, Unreal, Omniverse and now Autodesk products and many more adopt this system can allow for a common language to package, assemble, light all your different scenes. You can then share them not only between software but between studios. Because as you may know, not only one studio is involved on a movie like Avengers, okay? But 20 of what's called a vendor can be involved. You usually have the main vendor who are in charge of establishing the look of some hero assets or shots and then some sequence can be hand off to third parties to help the need of such a big production. And the thing with all these studios is that they can work in very different ways. Because there are so many options between CG package, rendering engines, not even mentioning proprietary tool here, but just that can cause a whole lot of issues when exchanging data between companies. So when you receive something from a main vendor, it can imply redoing some aspect of the work that have already been done just to fit the need of your pipeline in your studio. An example like Rocket Raccoon in Guardian of the Galaxy 2, mostly because it's so cute. Since the very first movie, Framestore has been the main vendor when it comes to the creation of Rocket Raccoon. But for the second movie, they needed solid backup, so on one hand there was Weta for their work on the third act, and on the other hand, Trickster also helped a lot on a few sequences. They all worked hard to make sure the look of this character is consistent even though their approach to groom, animation, material and lighting can be really different. And that's just a small example among so many other things. Imagine how easier it would be instead of sharing a crazy package of textures, materials, geometry, instead of that you share a package of, well, just USD files. 
Since we talk about USD files, we have quite a few options in terms of the extension. .usd would be a compressed binary representation of your USD, so very light and fast to save. But if you try to edit this thing with a text editor, it's just a series of one and zeros. USDA, on the other hand, is the uncompressed version, the ASCII version. If you are a bit savvy in scripting, you can edit information of your USD with script editor. Those two are very similar to Maya, where you have a MB, Maya binary, and MA, a Maya ASCII version of your scene. USDZ would be like an archive containing multiple USD textures and data related to your scene. The advantage is you don't actually need to unpack it to read it. It's totally usable as it is for augmented reality on phone or other device. So all of this should help make data sharing between industries much more streamlined. And even internally within a studio, that's the kind of thing that has been giving headaches to the biggest VFX and animation companies. How do you share, let's say, a huge environment scene with other departments, like animation or FX? How do we all collaborate effectively without wasting time? A strong pipeline effort has been the key for that. Some companies coming up with better ways than others. In those days where expectations are higher, while deadlines are getting shorter, I am not surprised that most big studios are transitioning toward a new SD pipeline. More than ever, we need to communicate and collaborate more efficiently if we want to achieve better visuals. USD naturally comes with its own concept and therefore its own lingo. In that way, it should help making the communication between studios and industries much more universal. Things like what's a primitive, a payload, an opinion. That's the vocabulary that I will try to clarify as we go along with a little tutorial series about environment making. As I mentioned, USD is open source and you can download the source code on GitHub. If you are a technical person and wish to bring your contribution to the code, you have all the instructions here to get this running and ready to edit. Adding all the links in the description if you are interested to have a look. Also, Pixar worked on an asset slash scene visualizer called USD Viewer. So super handy if you need to check out the look of an asset or a scene real quick. And you can even integrate a render actually in there, like side effects in version 19 of Houdini has been working to integrate their own Karma engine. Hmm. Talking about side effects, they have been one of the first developers to actually embrace USD and add a feature to Houdini called Solaris. They released the first version in version 18 back in 2019. It's been more than three years they work on it now, and they reached a point in version 19 where things are much more production ready, with a lot more tools to support USD scene creation, like physical layout interaction, various brush to manipulate asset and instancing. And on top of that, they upgraded their new engine Karma to a much more robust version that can take advantage of GPU power. Of course, you're not forced to use Karma, you can totally use any engine that has been integrated in Solaris, such as Renderman, Redshift, Arnold, V-Ray. It seems like Renderman is going to be the one commonly adopted by big studios. I guess it makes sense with the history of blockbuster productions. Not only movie companies, but also the real-time industry is turning toward USD, because you have now Unreal 5 that is supporting this format, and NVIDIA actually have been working on their own real-time ray tracer called Omniverse that fully works with USD. The advantage with this software is it enables collaboration with other USD apps with a live bridge. So whether you are working from 3 d Max, Maya, Houdini, you should be able to link those together. Most likely something I will want to start testing at some point that sounds super promising. So sure, big studio companies are the ones that can benefit from USD, 
But at the same time, there are so many cool advantages to USD. Like fast export times, saving memory space while having complex scene with crazy amount of instances, procedural material assignments and layering system are to me some of the key selling points of this approach. And this is the kind of thing that can help pushing smaller companies to a much more organized and collaborative space. One good example is the work developed at Ingenuity Studio. They have been working with Solaris and USD for a few years now. They then managed to take advantage of it for music video and TV projects. The type of project that actually required a fast-paced production. I invite you to check out Grant Miller's talk about world building at SIGGRAPH 2021 with side effects. He talks about their experience with USD pipeline and Solaris, and that's definitely an eye-opening conversation. So yeah, Solar is pretty amazing stuff if you ask me, so thanks SideFX for that. And we'll start this tutorial series by having a look at converting some Megascan assets into USD with Material X shaders and all the good stuff, so we can create a small library for us to play with and finally create a simple environment scene. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care and I'll see you guys next time.